Hi, everyone, and welcome to Behind the Body. We are so excited about today's episode because it's something that you and I are experiencing exactly. every day of our lives. And we know so many of you out there are as well. It doesn't matter if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or older, we all experience the aging process. Exactly. And you know, for me, it has been an exciting journey. As a woman, I think we are kind of a little bit scared about to get old. But you know what? I'm enjoying the process. I am too. And I don't think I've always felt like that. But for those of you tuning in for the first time, I am 43 and you are 39. Yes. We just had birthdays in February. So you are almost 40 years old. I cannot wait for my 40s. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to turn a party. You got ready. I can't wait for the Actually, I still I still PTSD and I'm still hungover from <laughs> your 39th that was, party, so I am like worried about your 40th. <laughs> that was only the warm up, so you got ready. <laughs> but I think that this is like such a critical time for you because I think the biggest monumental change for me mentally was when I turned 40. Like I had this, I don't know, like this apprehension, this anxiety about it, this like no longer feeling like, I, you know, I, I don't want to say excuses, but like any any of the things I was like, oh, it's because I'm 20 years or oh, because I'm 30 is like, th that doesn't exist anymore. I can't say anything like, oh, you know, it's because I'm 40. Like, no, 40 is older. It's responsible. It's having your shit together. It's like all of the things. I mean, you are like, for most people, halfway through your life, if you're lucky to live to 80. Yeah, but that is for me what it's funny. And at, at the same time, I love it because I don't feel that. I don't feel this inside is. I am excited. I have, a, a, you know, most of my friends is already 40 plus or is on the 30 going to the 40 this year. And yeah, all them is kind of going through the same. And I swear for God, for me, I'm excited. I'm excited maybe because I have you as an inspiration. So I paved the way. For <laughs> <laughs> no, in the last three years, I'm being you getting like 41, 42, 43, and you only got better. Oh. And I'm not telling you that because I'm sitting in your house and I'm scared you kick me out. <laughs> <laughs> or because you've paid me for that. No, no. But maybe, definitely maybe that is one of the reasons that I feel so comfortable and so excited. And to be honest, the first time that I feel confident to take a self, I a was selfie. a selfie, like a picture, like me, my face and I. <laughs> I think the world knows what a selfie is, but, but thank you for explaining it. <laughs> Just to, you know, make sure you guys understood. But I was already 37 and maybe because I got like my nose job done, I made a few changes in my face that uh, before bothered me. Or maybe because as I get older, I get more confident on my own skin and I know, you know, that I'm pretty the way that I am. And or is everything together? I just really first now I'm I'm I can invest more in myself. So maybe that makes me feel better. You mean financially. Yeah, financially. But the truth is I wanna be 40 as, as soon as I can. Maybe because I want to use my my journey, you know, to inspire it and to help other women that is going through all these anxieties. I don't know. I just feel like physically, mentally, financially, I feel much better. So maybe it's why I don't feel all these anxieties. Maybe because I look up different to eight, you know. I look to my little girls. I love them so much. But, uh, you know, all the insecurities, all the, you know, lack of confidence because they still figuring out sometimes 
who their they path are, in life, their relationship. It's different when I look to my masters, you know, they're like, you know. We got it. We got it. Yeah. Go. <laughs> so maybe it's why. Yeah. So the reason you are excited about getting 40 is because you're on an upward trajectory, carving, creating the life that you want. And so it's only getting better in your mind. I agree. Maybe. Yeah. Yes. The best way to describe. Yeah, well, She's I, the best. But I love that because that's, it's such a good point. And I think that, I was the opposite in that, maybe not the opposite, but I was at a point in my life where I had been working the same job, corporate job for that point, 16 years. You know, I've been married for a handful of years. Like I, it, like things were just very stable and great. You know, my life was amazing, but I just felt like, okay, another year kind of doing the same thing. And, but now I'm getting older and I, I don't know, like that just sort of hit me to be like, this can't be all there is. And I don't mean in any way was I dissatisfied with my life. I love my life. But like, I just felt like, uh, like I needed to shake up my life a little bit. And God is putting myself in your life. That's right. <laughs> He's like, you need to shake it up. Let me introduce you to Anna Daltro. <laughs> because it was exactly on, at this time. It was. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so that's exactly right. Because the one thing I thought of do, w- doing to sort of shake it up, and, and I've talked about it in previous podcasts, is like to make myself like I'm reverse aging was to compete for the first time ever in a bodybuilding show. And I didn't know anything about bodybuilding building. I didn't know any bodybuilders. And I, in some, somehow it got in my mind and I said, I'm just going to prep for a bikini bodybuilding show. And that's going to be my goal when I turn 40. So I can just sort of like, I don't know, do something different and something exciting and something that scares me and something that was hard, you know, kind of like fuel some fire in me. And then that's when I met you. And since then, my life has just been getting progressively better and better and better every single day. I love you. I I paid her for that. (laughs) (laughs) But it's true. And I think that that, and, and honestly, like that for me, after I did that show, or I wouldn't even say after I did it, when I started pre- prepping for that show and I realized how intense it was, how hard, how much discipline it takes mentally and physically and emotionally, did I flip the switch in my head? And all of a sudden I thought like, who cares about getting older? Like, look what I am doing. Look what I'm accomplishing. Something that, you know, 99% of the society couldn't do. I mean, well, maybe they could if they put their mind to it, but I was accomplishing something I thought that was very big. And I felt like I just felt, I just felt so amazing. I think it's because it's when you, re- you realize that it doesn't matter how old you are, you know, if you set up a goal, you, you're going to get it. You know, it's going to take a time. It's going to take a lot of work, but it's not because you're 40, you're going, you're not going to, get it you know if one person got it you can get it as well because i think they've uh, put in other words people start to think like oh you 40 you cannot wear a crop top or you 40 you cannot be on a stage wearing a bikini or you 40 you're not going to be able to do all the workout all the cardio like the little girl that is going to step on the stage with you that by the way you already kick at some young butt can do it because I think we start to feel like I cannot do everything. I cannot do as I did not before. And yeah, some situations we start uh, as we are talking before, everything in my life it got better beside my joints, my articulations, <laughs> and my hangover. <laughs> the rest, everything just got better. But yeah, I had like the doubt, especially because we are the first generation that actually can decide to not have kids because we don't want to have kids or can just can like age and be 40, 45, 50, 60 and still like wear a baby suit or a, a crop top or go to the gym and have abs and show your abs, you know? And when you realize that a lot of other women was doing the same, you are not by yourself, you are not alone. We live in the Pet- Peter Pan world. We're not going to get old. You know the movie that uh, the little boy never get old? How did Benjamin name? Button? Yeah. Wait, no, he gets old backwards. Oh, Peter Peter Pan? Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> we call Peter Pan in Brazil. So Peter Pan. <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> what? <laughs> Peter Pan. <laughs> 
Now you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> the Portuguese uh, beer Bar- can. <laughs> I love it. Okay. You know, and I felt the same when I was competing. I was Angelica the same. We were like already 30s, feelings like 20s, because that is the feeling I assume on the bodybuilding uh, world. We feel like we are not aging because... Yeah, and I think a big reason for that, and this isn't, of course, about bodybuilding, but it was a significant part of my life because I started at 40. But the thing about bodybuilding is that you eat really well and really clean and you stay very lean and you're very, very active with weightlifting and cardio. And so without just the sport of bodybuilding, even if you just did those things, you're already in the upper echelon of people in this age bracket. And don't forget that we also sleep very well. And drink a lot of water. So it's a combo. It is. You you cannot expect to get old and feel good if you still having habits like what on train is no our bodies yes it's getting old you Let's know talk about this though because i like where you were going with the perception of like wearing crop tops or wearing bikinis because even though i do feel like we're the generation that sort of al- is allowed to do that right it's like more generally acceptable a lot more millennials or gen z's like don't have you know, or opting not to have children or opting to pursue an unconventional career path or, you know, rent forever, not buy a house. Like they're just doing these things. Right. But I'd like to talk about still how society like blocks us from sort of acting or dressing the way that we want, the way that we feel and how they sort of accept that. I think because we still be a very small group yet, you know, of a woman who goes to the gym, looks better. And it's why we do look good. We are not afraid to put a crop top, a small dress, whatever. Of course, in our world at the gym, where we go, we are okay. But definitely when if you're going to meet like people from your school, you know, that is in your age, but you have like not contact with them. Most of them like got married, have kids, unfortunately are overweight. The confidence is a little bit fragile because they don't have time for themselves and this and that. That is the thing. I think when people see us doing what they f- they think they are not able to do, the judgment is started. Oh, 100%. And I think we are the one who say like, you know what? I'm so sorry, but I'm going to wear my crop top. And if you don't like, close your eyes. And also, what about me, like, says I shouldn't wear a crop top? I mean, I don't walk around with a sign that says I'm age 43. Yeah. So if I want to wear a crop top, which I do all the time, I'm going to And wear I'm a crop doing top. my diet to do too. <laughs> but if we want to wear skimpy bikinis to the beach or just bikinis to the beach, but, you know, you are Brazil, so you guys, it'll <laughs> take But then why not? Because what says we're 43 or you're 39 and that we shouldn't wear what we feel comfortable wearing? And even we say, and even we look that we are 40, the point is, when we put a clothes, it's for us. Yes. So I'm not, never will admit and nobody to tell me what I should wear. And listen to me, woman, that you are there listening, watching us. You do the same. You know why nobody going to tell me anything? Because I don't give a room. And if anybody try to shame me because they are jealous, they are insecure, I'm going to put it in another place. Woman, man old, young, I don't care. Because I don't do this to people. I respect everybody. So I want to be respected. So no, I will be 45, hopeful, wearing even a smaller crop top (laughs) than now, because by there I'm going to give it up the chocolate. (laughs) For sure, I hope. (laughs) So I'm going to have your six pack. And now you're going to see me recording the podcast wearing bikini. That is the whole thing. People need to understand because they don't think they are able to do it. They cannot judge us. They cannot blame us. They cannot say like, oh, they are too old for that. No, my dear. Guess what? We are not. But they do no matter what. There is a certain idea. People who are middle-aged or in their 40s that they dress a little bit more modestly, dress a little bit more conservatively. I mean, if I go shopping I mean, the places I have to shop are where Gen Z shops. And I'm like, well, you don't have quite the same taste, but 
we all like crop tops, but you know, I think that it's just different, you know, and no matter what, if I'm out in a pair of cut off jean shorts and a crop top, which for me in San Diego in warm weather is a very typical outfit and yeah. flip flops. Like yeah. literally that is my outfit. But if I'm out and somebody knows I'm 43 or it comes up, like then that is an automatic look up and down and there's some perceived judgment there, right? I know. People just expect you to fit in this idea of like what women should dress like when they're in their forties and act like, you know, but certainly a crop top with cut off jean shorts and, and flip flops in a lot of people's minds doesn't fit that bill. But again, I think what the, one of the benefits is with getting older is like this sense of confidence. Yeah, I will do whatever I want to do. Ooh. I don't care what opinion anybody has. In fact, my husband sometimes is like, that's a little short. That's a little tight. Maybe you don't wear crop tops. And I'm like, the fact that he says that, he knows actually better not to say it. I know. The fact that he says it means I will apt, I will double down on it. Bikini. <laughs> well, I will double down because it, like you said, we dress for ourselves. I think most women yeah. dress for themselves. I do my makeup for myself. Everything is so I can feel my best. Oh, and yeah. how I feel most comfortable, that's how you're going to see me. Exactly. I, I'm not going to wear a turtleneck or a long sleeve or sh long shorts because that's not my vibe, you know? Like, it's just And not. the funny is a man can wear whatever they want. Mm -hmm. They wear the same clothes they was wearing when they were 16, 17, 20, and it's fine. But us, every time they try to bless our power. They try to minimize our power. Yeah. And the little things, the little jokings, like, oh, you're going to wear this? Oh, do you don't think you are too old for these? Oh, that is, I, yes, that is, that is the line. It's why we are here. Okay, ladies, because we're not going to let you, exactly you over there. We're not going to let you accept these anymore. I think you should wear what you feel comfortable. Exactly. A hundred percent. When I'm not comfortable with my body, I don't show my, my and belly. We all know that. We all know there's a type of clothes. Yeah. Or what. Even if it's just momentarily a specific day or a week that you don't feel comfortable in it, you know, not to wear that. But if your jam is to wear a tight bodycon dress and you're 45 or 50 or 60, wear the damn dress if you feel like you look good. Because I guarantee you, you look good. And Go there's ulterior for. motives for the person saying, mm, are you sure you don't, we want to wear that? Are you sure you're too old or that's too tight or that's too short? That's on that person coming yeah. from their own insecurities. Exactly. And you said like, no, if you don't feel comfortable, don't wear. Yeah. Exactly. It's what I say. My husband say like, oh, it's too short. So like, so you do wear. I yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. We are good. Because at the end of the day, everybody is going to try to give your opinion. The judgments are there. But uh, if people have time enough to be judging us, I'm sorry for you, but we're not going to change. And that is so true when you talk about judgment, because I am the least judgmental person. And I also am like the least jealous person. Both of those, I I'm lucky that I don't get. But I think the reason is, is because I'm so happy and comfortable with myself that like, I don't feel the need to like look at anybody else and judge or comment on them or wonder what their decision making process was when they get dressed or do anything for that matter. Like you do you, I am living my best life and I hope you are too. I don't have time for that. No. I'm very busy being happy and making people around me happy that I don't have time for that. And that is a freedom for sure because I use it to be the 20 years old insecure woman and I'm very happy to almost be in my 40s. I feel very good with my skin and I'm here to help all my clients and everybody around me. And now with the podcast, I hope to help even more women because it's that. The process of aging is going to happen, yeah. but uh, you need to find what's the best version of you. If you don't feel more comfortable in wear crop top because you feel like you have two kids, a husband, your husband is jealous, and you never like much to wear a crop top, good for you, wear whatever you want. But don't feel that you are too old for wear anything. It's everything the way that you feel. And as I'm thinking about ways I've maybe modified my dress, seeing as I've gotten older, I would say before maybe I would wear something tight and short and maybe that showed off some cleavage. 
Now I'm like, okay, maybe one or two of those. And I don't, I don't want to say classier because I don't think that it's not classy on the other way, but I just like to have a little bit of a, my, my look has evolved a little bit. But that is normal. 100%. Yeah. It, I feel the same before I like the very tiny, tiny short dress. Now it's stressing me out to make it two steps and you to totally. push down. Or have to so, suck it in the whole night. I'm like, yeah. I'm exhausted. <laughs> you know, exactly. I feel like sometimes I just want to get more comfortable. Yes. But again, not because I feel old. It's just because I don't have the freedom that today wear a crop top, tomorrow wear like a sweatpants. I just don't like to nobody put us on the, okay, you here, you 40s, you cannot wear this anymore. No, I remember when I was a kid and I looked to my mom, she was 30 something. And I was like, oh my God, my mom is old. Because it's the feeling our mom generation was that. Yeah. Now we have all this procedure that is helping us like laser, Botox, fillers, and everything that if you do right, is gonna help you if you don't go too crazy. <laughs> It's going to help you. And uh, before, I don't know here, but in Brazil, it's like, okay, you got married, you have kids, your husband probably is going to shit on you with a woman half your age, is going to leave you because of her, and you're going to be with two kids broke because they're going <laughs> to... Take everything. <laughs> Get everything. Oh my gosh. What's going on with the men in Brazil? <laughs> it's my mom's generation. Is, yeah. yeah. Well, but don't worry. Me and my friends, we took over. No one of my friends go through the same situation. Why? I think because by watching our moms, we just like, you know, fuck you. I'm not going to be the next one. Yeah. I'm going to go to work outside. I'm not going to stay at home raising kids. You know, I'm going to work. I'm going to be independent. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to be looking good with 30, 40, 50 because it's for us. So we change, they change, yeah. you know, and the society is hopeful for the other generations is going to be a little bit nicer with the woman because yeah. I just think we have all this pressure. Okay, you are getting old. You need to stay good because men, I don't know what happened with them. They do not have a worry in the world. It is so sad. But I, I yeah. also, when you look at like television, commercials, ads on social media, like everything revolves around fixing or changing women. Everything does. Yeah. And in one hand, it makes sense because we are such consumers of products. But on the other hand, it makes us think that we're never good enough, that there's always something more that we need to do or buy to improve ourselves in whatever way, right? Physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever. And it's so overwhelming for people that it's no wonder why we just constantly feel like we're not good enough. And as a result, need to like buy stuff to make us feel better. But you're right. Is the how the market works and that is put into us feel exactly the way. Oh, I need more. I need more fillers. Or now they creating this new laser. That's okay. I do have have some, you know, fine lines that uh, is nothing that I can do about it because I don't want to like put a fillers in my whole face and don't recognize myself. We're going to get old. I, I think the only time that I felt that I was getting old is when I saw my first white hair. I was like, ah! Yeah, I want to talk about like ways that we felt we are getting old because there are a few things where I'm like, I'm mostly in denial about getting old. I'm just like, okay, another year means I'm improving. And we could talk about that in a second. Cause I think like that in particular is very important just for your mindset, but the gray hairs, actually I've been getting gray hair. It's just, her it's hereditary. So like I've been getting little ones for a very long time. Um, me wasn't. So I think it's why I shock it. First, they come from nowhere. I never saw my white hair into the day that I saw that was that long. I assume they're inside growing. And one day they're like, Chah! and come outside. <laughs> I know that I'm not seeing well yeah. as well because I'm getting older too. But when I still realized there was long like here, white, and I have a, a feel. You know, I dye my hair and I yeah. forget about it. And me but too. That's the thing too. I dye my hair all the time. Unfortunately, I have to go like every four or five weeks because it doesn't last very long. But like... <laughs> I, I feel so old when it starts to peek through like it is Gosh. now. And then as soon as I die, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm young again. But there are also <laughs> other ways. And I don't mean like competing and seeing myself on stage next to these young girls. That so sometimes makes me feel old. But just in general, I remember when I was young in my 20s and I had this really good guy friend who 
would like tell me about all the guy stuff, you know, which I I loved because I I think I learned a lot. But he once told me that he had hooked up with this girl and the next morning she was like walking or whatever. And he saw the skin above her knee was like a little bit Uh loose. I will never forget that. It was literally probably 20 years ago that he told me that. But I remember thinking like, oh, so that's a thing. Okay. So women's skin gets looser. And then that's like this indication that you're getting older. So now I'm like very aware of my skin. And we're going to talk about like what we do treatments and like all the things that we do to help ease our aging process. So I'll save that for later. But it's just like, it's like this awareness of my skin and the elasticity of my skin, not even like the wrinkles or whatever that too, but just like overall, that's one of the the ways I Because it was something that uh, brought you this memory from your guy friend. And it's like, okay, now I'm the woman that (laughs) you are talking about. It's been in my mind for 20 years. And I'm like, it's I I finally (laughs) happened to me you know but just like weird stuff like that and I know you said your joints and listen you and I work really hard in the gym we are pushing weight you just like pressed how much the other day uh 450 pounds yeah 450 pounds. So naturally your knees are like, okay, thank you, but go F yourself. (laughs) You know, like I have like bad elbow pain, right? And it's tennis elbow. And my doctor friend sent me an article that said tennis elbow is very prevalent in middle-aged women. It's what that damn article said. It's not for me. I I don't think this is what I have. I don't think, I don't think that's what it is. And I think I said in the last episode or a episode that my husband's always like, he'll get like indigestion or heartburn or like some weird shit. I'll be like, man, you got like problems, you know, be like, just wait until you're my age because he's seven years older. <laughs> and like all the time, every year, I'm like, no, still, still not happening, you know? So I feel like we take good care of ourselves enough where we may not experience some of these other things, but like metabolism, there was that big study that says metabolism doesn't slow down until your late sixties. But I think it's like the overall movement, right? Yeah. The movements that we engage in every day yeah. is less and less. So we are more susceptible to gaining weight faster than we were when we were in our thirties or especially when we were in our twenties. Yeah. And especially because for women, we have all the hormone things going on. So that is other thing that is hard on the losing weight process for example and yeah we still have like the the meno- menopause, menopause that we don't want to <laughs> we have 10 years yet to oh, think you about have it. maybe no. i don't Seven. every every month i get my period and it's like, like i get bad cramps you know i'm like yes come come on come in strong well, i want that is the only reason <laughs> that i want to might come as a soon as i know i know <laughs> it's not funny it's like the little things like that but i'm like every time my period comes in and i have such bad yeah. cramps and i'm like yeah all right, I'm in pain. But I'm a little on, girl, yeah. Okay, <laughs> who tell me the opposite? So like, no, I got my period yeah. this month. <laughs> but I have been seeing my doctor for all of my hormone issues, and I'm going to an endocrinologist tomorrow to talk about it. But every doctor is like perimenopause, these symptoms, and I'm like, well, so like, don't tell me that, okay? I'm refusing. I'm going to go to another doctor. The number ten opinion about. <laughs> Well, I'm going to keep going until somebody tells yeah. me what I want to hear, which is I'm far, far from my. menopause. But I know I'm not. It's a fact of life. And when it comes, I will celebrate all the things that comes with it, which I don't think there is any except for I won't get my period anymore. Anyway, that's still in the future. But yeah, it's hormonal changes. Yeah. Things are happening to us at 39 and 43. Even if it's not menopause, they're still yeah. way different than they were when we were early 30s and 20s. Oh, definitely. And don't worry. Don't try to think about it. You're just gonna know and feel when the time comes. Because I think a lot of people are like, when you be on my age, you're gonna see that. So live your best life, of course do everything like eating good drink your water sleep well use some good creams to your face don't do nothing crazy if you're too young i see like those little girls they look older than i because they have fillers everywhere they have a botox they have all those things in my opinion it's just make them look you know older mm-hmm. Enjoy you you still like in your train is your thirties. This episode's gonna go a little bit long, so I think it's gonna be a two parter because what I'm excited to share, and I think I'm excited to share because I'm also excited to learn what other people do, but Anna and I are gonna talk about what we do, procedures, other things that help 
us with our aging process for whatever it's worth. Just so there's anything that you could pick up that you guys want to incorporate into your own aging process. And we're also curious to hear about it, what everybody else is doing. But I think let's save that for the second part so we can talk about that. But I I also think everything that you just said about the fillers and all that stuff, I'm really excited to talk about too, because I feel very passionate about that stuff. I know. And it's because of you that I, I didn't go crazy doing anything because I always have you to talk about it before. And again, you are an inspiration for me, even we just like three years and a half apart, four years. It's not a lot. You know, you jump in the cold pool before. I was like, hey, <laughs> Ooh, I'm coming. <laughs> I'm kind of warm up myself. <laughs> and yes, let's do two episodes because I also want to talk about the difference that I see when you go into this process and when you have like a health life and when you don't. So maybe, you know, make some change if you are aging like in your late studies and you know 40s maybe can help you to go through better this time yeah of course i love it well thank you everyone for tuning in to part one of the aging process please like share subscribe comment below let us know what you think of this episode how you're handling your own aging process follow us on instagram at behind the bod and let's dive into part two in a couple weeks right and we'll tell you all about how we physically handle our own aging process yes okay thanks everyone talk to you next time